grace to you and peace from God our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Spirit of love, you know our frailties and our weaknesses, not from a distance, but up close and personal through your Son. When we turn to you in faith for help, even with a weak faith, hear from heaven and grant us deliverance. In Jesus' precious and powerful name, amen. The text for this morning is a portion of today's gospel lesson, the story of Jesus healing the daughter of the woman with the demon, and Jesus healing the deaf man. In the last verse of the text, it says, They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Now, there are many miracles that are recorded for Jesus in Scripture, where Jesus conquers the day by simply speaking. Other times, such as this morning, we also get a different picture of Jesus who reaches out to touch someone. I read recently of a story about a woman who crossed the street against a red light, was struck by a car, which ran over her and pinned her beneath the car. She was absolutely terrified because they had to wait until the police could bring a crane to lift the car up in order to extricate her from the situation. But there was a young man there who did what he thought was the logical thing to do. He got down on his back and he shinnied his way underneath the car with her, took her by the hand and said, I'll stay here with you until they can lift this off you. Turns out her injuries were minor. And she said what meant the most to her during this terrible ordeal was the physical touch of the young man's hand. In our gospel lesson, we have the story of a man who had been born deaf. He can't hear a sound. And Mark records for us, he had an impediment in his speech. Well, duh. If you can't hear and you've never been able to hear, how are you possibly able to speak plainly? And along comes Jesus, who miraculously heals the man. Now, in my research for this morning, I learned some things. Imagine, if you will, that you're sitting here on a Sunday morning. Wait, you don't have to imagine. You are. <laughs> you're sitting here on a Sunday morning, and you're listening to me. And at the same time you're listening to me, old Christy becomes aware of a bird chirping outside. She can hear the bird, but she's listening and paying attention to me. Her brain is able to process that and say, your focus is here, and we're going to pay no attention to that sound over there. In the meantime, Heather, you're sitting there, and you're conscious of a truck going by outside. And you wind up listening to the truck. Whereas my words to you become wah, 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 because you're not listening to me. In the meantime, Madeline has a coughing fit. And so Sheila, out of the goodness of her heart, reaches into her purse and pulls out a package of cough drops. But the crinkling of the cellophane bag is driving Carolyn crazy. <laughs> because she's listening to that instead of me. Now, I, I bring you these few examples to point out how marvelous our brain is. It has the ability to hear all these sounds, process them, prioritize them, and decide which ones are the ones worth listening to. Without that ability, 
you would go nuts. Imagine, Charlotte, if you will, that you're sitting right there where you are, and the three ladies behind you are all talking to you at once about something different. And somehow, you're trying to pay attention to all three of those. Now, our buddy Bob is not here this morning, and later on we would be celebrating his beloved wife's birthday. But I can imagine that there were times when Karen was talking to Bob and he never heard a word she was saying. <laughs> now, if she could somehow insert herself into the NASCAR broadcast and have the announcers say, and there goes Jimmy Johnson up to the front and Bob, you better get to the store and pick up that gallon of milk. <laughs> Otherwise, She's going to ask him where the milk is, and he's going to go, what milk? Hmm. The milk I asked you to get. You didn't ask me to get milk. In fact, Madeline and I have an arrangement. If she asks me to do something, and I do not respond, she can assume I didn't hear her, and vice versa. So now we have this man. He can't hear. He can't speak. And his friends bring him to Jesus because in faith, they believe Jesus is the one who can heal him. And I love what Jesus does. He didn't want to make a big deal out of it. In fact, when he got to the town, he went and hid inside somebody's house. He wanted some privacy. But the people wouldn't let him have it. So he comes back, and the people are around him. They bring in this deaf guy. And Jesus takes the deaf man aside puts his fingers in the man's ears. I don't know why he did that, but he did. And then even more strange, Mark says he spat. Now, I don't know if he spat into his hands like one of those Boston Red Sox players does, or if he spat on the ground, but in any event, he spits and then touches the man's mouth. Now, I'm told that when you've got a wound, the saliva of a dog licking it is good for you. It helps cure germs or something. What Jesus' saliva did, I have no idea. But we do know that immediately the man was able to hear. Now again, I know from my research that someone who has had hardness of hearing or who has been deaf for a long time and is suddenly able to hear. Experiences like I was describing for you. All these sounds coming from all these different directions. Which ones do I listen to? Which ones do I hear? Which ones are important? Oh, it's making me crazy. I can't focus. It's like audio ADHD. Attention deficit disorder. But this story is even more miraculous than that. Not only did Jesus touch the man's ears and enable him to hear, but Mark tells us he spoke plainly. Now, how did you learn to speak? By listening. You heard your parents, and you imitated the sounds they were making. That's why so many parents so fervently repeat the words that they most want their child to say, Mama, Mama, or Papa, Papa. In my case, with my kids and grandkids, it was Yankees, Yankees, <laughs> Yankees. <laughs> but eventually, the child learns to mimic the sound. And as the child grows and the brain matures, the child is able to associate meaning with the words. And so they understand that mama refers to that lady who feeds me. Papa refers to that guy over there, and so on. Mark tells us that immediately this guy was able to speak plainly. He went from not being able to hear any sound at all to being able to hear everything, process it, and communicate. No wonder the people were astounded. 
Now, they probably didn't understand all that scientific mumble, 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 mumble that I just gave you. They just knew this guy was deaf and he couldn't speak, and now listen to him. He can hear everything and he won't shut up. <laughs> and they were amazed with Jesus. He has done all things well. There was a story a number of years ago, maybe you remember back in 2003, when the Northeastern United States experienced a major blackout. Entire states were without power. From Detroit all the way to the East Coast, from Buffalo all the way down to Philadelphia. There were many people, I'm sure, trapped in elevators, stuck inside this little metal box with no way of communicating with the outside world, no light, just a whole lot of fear. When the power comes back on, what a wonderful release that is. And I imagine that's exactly how this fellow felt. He had been trapped in the box of his mind, unable to hear the world around him, unable to communicate with and Jesus set him free. Now, I don't know what your box is this morning. I don't know what it is that has you trapped. But if Jesus can heal that man, Jesus can heal you. Jesus can release you from your box. In a story called Girded with Truth, George Bjorgi describes a little town in the mountains of France where there is a shrine famous for its miracles of healing. One day, shortly after the Second World War, a veteran amputee came to the shrine on his crutches, and people were looking at him and smirking, saying, does this guy really expect that God is going to restore his leg to him? Okay, this guy had good hearing. And he turned to those people and he said, no, of course I don't expect God to give me my leg back. My prayer is that God will help me live without my leg. So it is for us. As we face our situations, we know that as the people said 2,000 years ago, we can say about Jesus, He has done all things well, including what He does for me. May the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We worship God with our offering.